Richie's program, right? Richie's program. You got it right. You got it right. Not yeah. progress. Not progress. Not progresses. Not pro. Grayest, <laughs> not progress, none of that. Pro gray is French. I always want to fight. I did, I always want to fight Bruno, you know. I really want my belt today. That's the main thing. You know what? Me and Nate, it was fucking war. You know, I want my Josh Taylor rematch, of course. I went to Lake Charles for the uh, Olympic trials. I saw some real good amateurs there. So, yeah, I've just been traveling. That's all. Traveling, training, hunting, you know. All right, so any fights coming up? Um, They try to get a deal done with Maurice Hooker. Um, It's it's not official yet, but we're trying to see what's up. So, maybe sometime in April, it might be me and Maurice Hooker. But, um, like I said, it's not official yet. We're still waiting on the contract. Your last fight with Josh Taylor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was a great fight. Mm -hmm. You almost got it. So, yeah. would you want a rematch? I definitely want a rematch. Um. Rematch in America, of course. Um, yeah, <laughs> Where, in LA, yeah, maybe LA, New York. Really, it was originally. I think we was trying to get it to be in New York, but um, they actually said London. And I was, I jumped that opportunity. You know, first off, you know, even before the fight, it was number one versus number two in the mm -hmm. world, and I, I, I really wanted to go over there. I went to, I went to London. It was over twenty thousand people in the stands. Um, most American fighters don't get that type of opportunity, and I got it, you know. Um, I came out, I think it's a historical fight, first off. It's one of the, you know, it's, it's a, it was a great fight, you know, I'm, I'm involved in that. Um, but, of course, I came out on the other side. I didn't want to. Um, I still thought I had it, but it was a close fight. That's why I can't complain about it. You know, it was a, you know, and um, he was definitely, what surprised me, he was tougher than I thought. He was very, very tough. I really thought, I knew I couldn't get a decision going over there. But I really thought that I was gonna stop him. Not gonna lie, I really thought I was gonna knock him out. And um, he was tough, and I thought so. I give him, you know, credit for that. So hopefully one day we get the rematch, um, and and you know we'll make way more money, and hopefully it can be done here in America. Um, I really want my belts back. That's the main thing. I want my belt. So, um, Josh Taylor, Jose Ramirez, but um, I mean, you know. We'll see. I, they got those with the belts, but at the same time, you know, they got other bigger fighters out there. You know, like I said, me and Maurice Hooker, we, we might fight. And then after that, we somebody like Mikey Garcia, mm -hmm. um, and over, it's just, and then maybe go up to 147. It's a whole bunch of fighters at 147. So if I don't get my belts back at 140, if I can't get the opportunity, and you know, in the near future, this year or next year, then you know, maybe go more, maybe go up to 147 and see what I can do. Have you heard Devin Haney? Calling out Mikey Garcia. I saw that. I saw he's calling out Mike Garcia. I saw that. I saw it actually today. I was watching him and um, it was an interview with, um, they was going at it with Bernard Hopkins after the fight about Ryan Garcia. And um, yeah, he called out Mikey Garcia. So, and that's another fight, you know, me and Devin Haney, it, you know, over there. So it could be Hooker, it could be Mike Garcia, it could be Devin Haney. Um, it's a lot of fights, you know, lined up between that 130, 140, 147. It's a whole lot of fights for me right now. So, you know, we'll see. Also, David Haney was calling out or having like this little beef on Instagram with Adrian Broner. Would you like that fight? Me, I def I always want to fight Adrian Broner. Me, yeah. I always, I always want to fight Adrian Broner. You know, for Why? forever. I mean, because it's, I think it's a first off, like. I have a, a personality, like I talk a lot of shit sometimes. When people when people come at me, when people come at me, I talk shit. And um, you know, he has a personality to where he talks shit, you know, you can't really come at him. So I think that'll be very entertaining between me and him. Um, we both come, I think, from the same type of background. You know, Adrian Broner hasn't had a fighter, I don't think, in a long time that came from the same type of background he came from. Me and him have the same type of you know, a similar type of backgrounds or whatever. So I think that'll be, you know, we talk shit and, you know, we got a lot of, you know, support from like the urban community behind us, basically. So I think that'll be a, um, I think that'll be a, a, a great fight, you know, one day down the line, if he can make 140, 140, I don't know. I don't even know what's going on with Adrian right now. I gotta ask you this, Deontay mm -hmm. Wilder, Tyson Fury too. I got Deontay Wilder. I got Deontay Wilder. Um, first off, when I went to England, they roll with their fighters. They stick with their fighters, right? Here in America, it's like we don't stick with our fighters. Why not? I don't know. Uh, I, I hate to bring the race card and things, but like it's it's just so hard. Like a lot of people just don't stick with like the black American fighters. I don't know why. It's just something 
I don't know. And I think he's a very likable person, but sometimes I think he could, Deontay Wilder could go overboard and, you know, say some things like he want to catch a body and stuff. Maybe people don't, you know, um, they don't like really take kind to that, those type of words. But for me, I stick with Deontay Wilder. And I think Tyson Fury is a great fighter, a great, great fighter, but I just think I still got to roll with Deontay Wilder. The American hometown fighter, you got to roll with him. And of course, Mikey Garcia, Jesse Vargas. Mm -hmm. I, this is a great fight. Um, I roll with Mike Garcia, um, but I, I don't think it's gonna be a knockout or nothing like that. I think it's gonna be um, I think it's gonna be like a, a close fight and maybe a twelve round unanimous decision to Mike Garcia. And I, I went up, you know, I went to the press conference and you know I said I would definitely want to fight the winner. So either Mike Garcia or Jesse Vargas, you know, after of course I got to deal with what I got to deal with. If it's gonna be Marie Tucker, then I deal with that and then um, hopefully I get the winner of those two. You sparred Nate Diaz before. How was that? You know what? Me and Nate, it was fucking war. Like it was, I got the video too. I might put it out one day, but I told him, I showed, I sent it to him on Instagram and stuff like that. I was like, bro, like this is like paper. Give one, we, we have to see that. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, um, yeah, me and Nate, we fucking, yeah, me and Nate, we, we went at it. Yeah, me and Nate, we, we definitely, we, we, we went at it. And um, the crazy thing about that is, so, it was late at night, just like it was like tonight or whatever. And um, I was in training camp for, uh, I forgot one of those fighters I was fighting. And um, we was actually on the way to the movies. And so I just, my chef made a big ass plate of shrimp spaghetti <laughs> for me. And I literally, I sat in here and ate it. And um, I sat in the gym, was eating it because one of my other friends, he came in here and he sparred that night. And um, Nate was in here, he was about to, you know, he was warming up and stuff and his arm partner didn't come. And so they was like, shit, do you want spot? I was like, hell yeah, what? Took off my shirt all bloated and shit. I'm, I'm talking about, I had a plate about this big full of spaghetti and I ate every single fucking piece of string, every um piece of string of spaghetti. And like, and then we spot and then like, of course I was bloated. I was slow, but I still had the power. And like we fucking, it was basically, it was pay-per-view TV. And I still got the video and one day I'll put it out. You know. Oh, you want to see that? Yeah, one day I put out me and Nate. Yeah, but we 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 fucking we went at it for sure. Who else was the toughest fighter you ever sparred? Ever sparred? I sparred a whole bunch of fighters. Um, like biggest names, maybe. Who you sparred? Um, I sparred with um, of course Austin Trout, um, the Charlo twins, um. Like I said, Nate. Nate not really a boxer though. Um, uh, he has a Boxing background? Yeah, he got a boxing background. Really not a professional boxer. But he got a boxing background. But I'm talking about like world champions. The, the Charlo twins is, is definitely, we all came up together in the Amherst and stuff. So me and them did like hundreds of rounds together. Um, yeah, and that's, I think that's about as far as world champion wise. And one of my biggest inspirations was always like Ricardo Williams. I don't know if you know what that is, but he was a, uh, in a, I don't want to lie, 2004 Olympics. He was like a silver medalist. He was like, like supposedly like the next fucking the great thing coming out he's from um ohio and um, mm -hmm. i spoiled him a lot of rounds and that's kind of got my iq very very high mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ohio, what's, what's from Terrence Sensi. Crawford? Uh, no Crawford? no is terrence that? is from he from um, oh, Bronner. omaha oh. Bronner's from ohio that's okay. they came up together actually rick and ricardo Williams and Bronner, they all came up together receive and receive and stuff they came up together ohio actually produced a lot of real good fighters so they always like when I was coming up in the amateurs, they always wear the purple and yellow stuff, and they all, you always see them always at the like tournaments and shit, winning all kinds of shit. Purple and yellow, Kobe, Kobe Bryant. Kobe, Kobe Bryant. Bryant. Yeah. Yeah. That was the man. Kobe was the man. You know, like he was our generation Jordan. You know, like we didn't come up watching um, Jordan. You know, we just heard about him and stuff, and you could watch YouTube highlights and stuff. But like, I came up watching Kobe. Like, I came up. I became a fan. Like because of like that series between it was like the Sixers and the Lakers um, back in the day. Allen Iverson is my favorite player and Kobe is my second favorite player. And like when those two was playing, I forgot the year or whatever. Um, but that's when I really like became. And then like the Kobe, the mentality and like what we used to do, like we used to shoot the paper balls in the trash and be like Kobe <laughs> all the time. Kobe, Kobe. That you know. So Kobe is definitely like he's our generation. He's Michael Jordan. So yeah. Devin Javante too little for me. I think he's little. Yeah, have to come up to one four. I think he's little. You know, I, I really think he's small. You know, I I think he's like what five four or something like that. Like he's he's little. Like it's I'm a big strong one forty. You know, I know he called out Josh Taylor, and uh, I I don't think nah. 
I mean, you know, you look at his last fight against um, Gamboa, you know, and then I won't say he struggled, but, you know, Gamboa had a, a fucking uh, Achilles tendon or some shit, like whatever. He was ripped up or some shit like that, you know, and he lasted 12 rounds with him, you know. So, I mean, I think Javante is a, a very, very good talent, you know, but I think he's one of the best in 135, 130, 135. Um, but I think, you know, sometimes you go up in weight, I think it might be too much for him. I think he's a little smart. I don't think he has the build to go up to 140. You know, he's he's small, he's cocky, he's short, he's cocky and stuff like that, but come up, it might be a little different. I think, um, yeah, I just don't think he has the build. You know, he's height-wise and stuff, of course, he could surprise me, but I don't know, I just don't see it. What about him and Lomachenko? I, I think Lomachenko is the best at 135. You, between him and Tia Fimo, and they about to fight, so we're gonna find out who is the best. For me, it's, um, Tia Fimo's the real deal. I oh. think I think Teofimo was the real deal. I, I just seen the fight. He fought one of my under cousins in New Orleans. Um, you mean his daddy talked about me him fighting actually one day if he goes up to one forty. So I think Teofimo he, he can definitely fight. He's the real deal. He's been in the you know he surprised the hell out of me with his last fight against Richard Comey. I really thought I really thought he was gonna beat Comey, but not like that. He stopped him in the second round, and I didn't think I really didn't think that he can do that. I think that I thought that Richard Comey was gonna hit him with some shit and give him some type of adversity. And it wasn't none that fucking Tiafim boom got him out of the, that was it. Now he set himself up for Lomachenko. Now that's gonna be a very interesting fight. I still I still think Loma is the best at 135, but Tia we gonna see. But Tia Fim was like, he's right there. So we'll see. Um Rollies. <laughs> Have you heard about Rollies? No, who the hell is that? No. Mm -mm. I'm, I'm, I'm Rolando like, Romero? Uh, Rollies? Uh, TNT? No, no that's Juan Ryan Garcia. You've never seen that video? No. Okay, I guess he's not popular, right? <laughs> he might be. I just, I'm not. I'm no, not, he I'm came not home into... from that sparring video. Okay, he kind of whooped Ryan Garcia. Yeah. So and then everybody would like talk so much. Yeah, know, I mean, you know. Yeah. So what do you think about Ryan? I think Ryan is good. So, same thing. I want to see him face adversity? You know, you don't know how good he is until. You know, you face adversity. You know, I know Devin called them out and stuff like that. And Devin is very popular on Instagram also. So, you know, let's see how good they are when you face adversity. You know, like, of course, um, the Instagram thing is a whole different monster these days. You can get famous on the Instagram and all that. Congrats to them, you know. But we'll, we'll see how, you know, how good both of them are when, you know, they fight somebody that, you know, of their caliber. You know, it's you get adversity back. So, We'll see. But I think I think you know Ryan is is definitely good. He fucking knocked the dude out with a, a hook first round the other night. You know that was you know that was amazing. That was definitely spectacular. And he's getting better. You know he's working out with um on the Canelo team and stuff. And he's definitely getting better. So congratulations to him. You know so we'll see what happens next. I think he's supposed to fight Lenaris next. What are you talking about? Lenaris. So if he beats him convincingly, I think he you could say he has the goods right now. You can't really say you can you can you he can pass the eye test right now, but not about the adversity thing. But as far as like when you when he um if he beats Lenard like he did that last dude, I think he passed the test. What about him and um Javante? I think Javante is a step up. Yeah, I, I personally think Javante is a step up from from him. So um, I've heard you did a big surprise for your mom. I bought a crib. I bought a house. Yeah, I bought my mama house in New Orleans. It's not like you just bought it. You surprised her. I surprised the shit out of my mom. Yeah, I, um, well, we wrapped up um, a bunch of boxes and just boxes after boxes after boxes. I put notes in them and stuff like that. And um, yeah, and, and kind of just, that's how we surprised for Christmas. Wait, I heard thing. I heard you said like oh it was an Airbnb or something, but then no, yeah, I said it was an Airbnb. I, I like because I was staying at the house um, when I went to New Orleans. I was staying at the house. We was all staying over there, and I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's an Airbnb because I furnished it too, so I couldn't just have an empty house. She would have known that was yeah. gonna be for her. So I um I dressed it up like it was an Airbnb and stuff like that, and then you know she unwrapped all her gifts and um she um yeah, like this is. This is your house. Like it was a key. Look, like, little key. And wow. So she um, yeah, she did it and um she she was a house. But I'm gonna tell you something I never told nobody that really close people only know to me. My mama didn't even want the house. What? Don't know why, don't know, but 
Um, it came out better because it's now it's an investment. Um, I actually did put it on Airbnb now mm -hmm. in New Orleans, and um, it's actually producing a lot of money already because New Orleans is, of course, like we got Mardi Gras, we got Jazz Fest, we got Essence Fest. So if anybody wants to come stay in New Orleans, hit up my Airbnb. It got my pictures all over the wall and all kinds of stuff already. <laughs> um, brand new construction. So yeah, she actually didn't mark the house. I was like, how can you not want a brand new house? Um, yeah, she didn't want it, so um, I think she waited for me to. I'm actually because I have a new construction coming up. People don't mm -hmm. know I'm building stuff right now, so I have I'm building some more stuff, some more properties in New Orleans. So maybe she's waiting for that. I don't know, but she didn't want that. So. Like, all right, whatever. Well, I guess I can make money off the house, and that's what I've been doing right now, just making oh money. My God. Well, yeah. that's crazy, but you yeah. know, when I heard that, I was like, oh wow, that's impressive. Yeah, that's I bought really a house, yeah, and she didn't want it, so whatever. Matter of fact. Drink hemp water. If I can do that, if I can do that on camera, this is one of my yeah. sponsors. Drink hemp water. Um, but in any ways, yeah, my kids here. One of them here, my daughter's here. She's three. My son is six. He'll go back to school tomorrow. Today's Monday, so no school today. Um, but they all good. They all everybody's everybody's perfect. Can't complain, you know. You come by me. Is she a princess? <laughs> she love princess. Is she a princess? She look like a princess. Huh? You think she's a princess? You think she's a princess? Oh. oh you think God, so? She look like Snow princess. White? You think that's Snow White? That's Elsa? That's not Elsa? Who is that? <laughs> White girl with blue eyes, of course, you think she's a princess. Hey, come here. What an accent. Thank you. Let me, come on. Let me see. She's so cute. Come on. Come on, come on. We were like at the gym, we just was like training and stuff. And she was just being in the ring. It's so cute to watch, you know, kids growing up, like with their like fathers. Mm -hmm. And then it's just, it's just it's so cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Guys, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just like, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. You want a box? You want it? Do you know how to box? Mm -hmm. Of no? course not. So, hell no, we're not fighting. No, 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 I'm never. I'm a princess, right? Yeah. <laughs> never fighting. Any fights that you're looking up to see? Mm -hmm. Wild Fury, um, Lomachenko and um, Tiafimo. Um, I want to see Crawford and Errol Spence. I want to see Errol Spence and Pacquiao. I want to see Danny Garcia and Errol Spence. All those one point seven is mixed. I want to see Crawford and Sean Porter if they're gonna fight. I heard that Terence Crawford might fight um, Conor McGregor in the octagon. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, Conor McGregor in the octagon. They said maybe. I want to see that. Um, it's a lot of fights. It's a lot of fights I want to see. Yeah, definitely. Do you think uh, Errol Spence is gonna be the same after the car accident? You know what? I don't. I don't know. You know, I hope. I hope so. But <sighs> when he did an interview, um, at the last fight, he just didn't seem. You know, and, and from what I'm hearing, you know, people talk boxing, people talk all all day, all kinds of shit all day. But it it, it just say like you know, it's worse than what it really is. You know, it's he's. Not the same, you know. I hope he does. I hope he is the same. But only time will tell. You know, we'll see. You know, his next fight, what he does, and you know, we'll see. You think if he, he is the same, would you be interested uh, to see Mikey Garcia and him again in the rematch? Nah. No. He beat him too easy. I think he beat him too easy. Mikey said he had an off night, which you know, in boxing, you know, people call that. You know, people always say that that's in Houston and stuff like that. But it's just how it is in boxing. Sometimes. You might have an off night, you might not have an off. You might have an on night, you know, like it's just, that's just how it is in boxing, you know, like in, in any sport you can have an off night, but in boxing, you can't, you, you have an off night and you lose and it's like, that fucking, that's on your record basically, you know, so, um, I, I don't know, what's up? You better be careful, you're gonna fall. No. Alright, what's up? Go ahead. So, um, so yeah, like, you know, I'm not but now I would. I wouldn't want to see him fight again. Let him go fight somebody else. Let him go, you know, he, he did the Mike Garcia thing. Let him fight Crawford, let him fight Pacquiao, let him fight Danny Garcia. Um, let him go mix it up with all the other dudes up there. Is there any fighter you want to send a message to? Um, not really. Because you know what? When I when I say stuff and I call people out, everybody call me on talking shit. They be like, oh, he talk shit, he do it, he do it. So right now, I'm just going to. I'm going to chill out. I'm mellow. You know, I want my Josh Taylor rematch, of course. Um, you know, I definitely want rematch. I guess I am talking about it. 
on the Josh Taylor rematch. I want the Ramirez fight, you know, if you know if it can happen. Um, and whoever I fight next, if it's Maurice Hook or if it's, you know, that's what it's looking like, it might be him, but it's not official yet. So if it's him, then that's what I'm fighting next. I'm not, I can't really, you know, plan on the future or nothing like that. So we'll see. I would like to see you and Andrew and Broner. I just. I always want to fight him. Bro. I did. I always want to fight Broner, you know. So you know, I think it'll be a, you know, I think it'll be a real good fight. Um, but we gotta see what he's gonna do. If he can, if he's gonna come back, if he's gonna be at one forty or one forty seven, we'll see. A lot of fighters don't want their sons to box. What about you? Don't I don't same thing. I don't want my son to box. I don't want my son to fight at all. It's just too hard, you know. Like um, like I think Mike Tyson explained it like best. Is like. Like, you born with all the stuff that I never had, you know, like I'm I'm doing all this, like I have to do this basically. I love it, of course I love my sport, but you know, like my son is born, my son and daughter is like, they're rich kids, you know, like, I, you know, it's, it's crazy to say, but like my, my kids are rich kids and I never had that luxury, you know, like I, so I kind of had to do this. My son is there, they're born with this already and I feel like you have to come to be a successful boxer, to be a successful fighter, I feel like you have to become, you have to come from like a, from the hood, basically, from like a poor background. You know, you have to be raised up fighting and you have to have that hunger in the back of your head um, that, you know, this is the way out. My kids don't have to do that. So if my son wants to fight, he doesn't have to think like, what else am I gonna do? You know, he can, his dad is rich. He don't have to think like, oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. Like, no, it's, but by the time, most likely by the time my son is 18 years old, I probably give him three or four houses that just produce an income automatically. So, you know, he might have an income when he's 18. So he might have a, what I wanna do is, you know, have let him get like a 700, 750 credit score in a, you know, three or four properties by the time he's 18. So he doesn't have to do that. When I was 18, I was broke as shit. You know, like I was eating noodles every day. So. I didn't, you know, like I have to, this is what I had to do. This, this was my way out. My son and daughter doesn't have to do that. So mm. if it's in his blood, then it's, then it's in his blood. But it's just, it, it's just too hard of a sport, you know. You mentioned to be a successful fighter, you have to come from nothing. You have to be hungry. Mm -hmm. Devin Haney, champion today. Mm -hmm. Not poor, not hungry. Um, I mean, noodles. <laughs> you know what? I you know what? I mean maybe a special case, you know, um you want to see how great he be, he be, he can become. I want to see how great he he can become, you know, like um you're right. And and I think he had a lot of guidance too. His daddy Bill is the done a great job with him. They put him on and stuff like that, but it's it's all about for me, I always judge a fighter how good they are when they get into like um some uh, like a really hard fight when somebody's mm -hmm. hitting you back, you know, like you look at Devin Haney right now, he's haven't had that fight to where he's had to push back against adversity. Basically, I know I never look at a fighter how good they are when you know when they just beating up on somebody. They get easy opponents and they beating up on somebody. You know, like I want to see when when he fights somebody good, you know, how good he can become. And usually, that's when you see the heart in somebody. That's when you see how much adversity they had to go through. You know, like. That's when that street stuff come up. That's when that hunger stuff come up. You think like when you when you get your ass whooped, you think like, all right, that's where that heart come from. You know, the street and all that, being fighting on the street and you know and being hungry and stuff. That's what I think that comes to play. Like I said, you know, I you know I, I like Devin Haney a lot. You know, I want to I want to see him. You know, if when he does fight somebody, you know, a, a, a good fighter, you know, on his level, how he how he will react. You know, so. And another thing, he had, um, I watched the thing about Devin Haney, I watched him come up as a little kid because one of my favorite southpaws was that Judah, which is his, mm -hmm. his, um, like his power ran. That's what we call him in New Orleans or whatever, his golf father. And, um, you know, so I watched him come up and he had a lot of guidance from the great Zab Judah. So, you know, I, I mean, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, but yeah, he's not poor. He's never, I don't think he was born poor or nothing like that. And, doesn't eat noodles like I, I used to do, you know, a young kid and stuff like that. But, you know, we'll see, you know, when he steps up and, you know, fight somebody, that's when you, I think that's when you see, you know, how somebody can react to adversity. Thank you guys for watching. You can follow Regis program 
Right. Regis progress. You got it right. You got it right. Not right, progressive. Right, right. Not progress. Not progresses. Not pro grayest. <laughs> not progress. <laughs> none of that. Pro gray is French. All right, and you can follow me at Snow Queen LA. And again, thank you guys for watching.